we're getting prepped here. This is Jim T. Chong, the walk star. And boy, we are going to be talking about the things that Asian people love the most. It's about numbers. And uh, welcome here. This is, again, Jim T. Chong, the walk star. And I'm with Jim Meyer from Remax Gold. And we are here with my good friend and very accomplished, successful CPA from San Rafael. And his name is? Robert Brownstein, CPA, at your service. Awesome. So, Robert, first question, when am I going to get my check from the government? <laughs> well, the government is uh, – many people have already gotten their checks. The way that you get your check is if the IRS has your bank information, and the easiest way that they get that is when you filed, if you have filed your 2019 tax return and showed your bank information for either getting a refund or making a payment. And also, even if you haven't filed your 2019 return, behind that are people that have filed their 2018 return and filed the same information. So, the question when you're going to get your check depends on if you've met the uh, those requirements of having filed a 2018 or 19 return. Now, yeah. let's say you're an older person who might have lower income and non-taxable income, and you didn't really need to file a tax return in the last two years. So what the IRS has done, if you go to the website, irs.gov, and you go to stimulus payments, it will show you a form where you can enter, simply enter your name, social security number, and date of birth, and it will tell you the status of when you're going to get your refund. Now, the problem is it's not quite working quite yet. They brought it out because in their, in their um, desire to get people this information as quick as possible, um, they haven't figured out all the ins and outs yet, but they will. They're working on it, and um, the message that comes back now is we can't determine the status of your refund with the information you provided. It's not that the information was wrong. It's just that they haven't – I mean, I, I think the first thing they set it up to access was people that filed 2019 returns, and I think it's taking time for the – layer on all the other situations. So, but I, I, I anticipate that they'll have this all settled out by the middle of May. Okay. Now, what if somebody was totally off the grid, they haven't paid taxes in 20 years, uh, and they should have been paying taxes? Are they going to be able to get anything, or are they out of luck? Well, I would say it all depends on what information the IRS has. You know, anybody that hasn't filed a return in any number of years, the first step would be to go to the IRS and ask them for a transcript of the last four years of activity. And that will show you if any income is reported to the IRS. Now, even if income was reported to the IRS, your income may have been below the requirements to file, below 9000 or 10000 depending on what year you're looking at. So if you haven't filed a return and you were not required to file a return, you could fill out a form to provide your bank information, which they can use to deposit your check. And based on what I've seen and read, that would not be the first tier. That would be like the third or fourth tier of people getting checked. So that's why, while we are in the middle of April, I'm saying the middle of May. Wow, very interesting. So now if I'm on the run and uh, there are warrants out for my arrest, is this a mistake for me to go and, and, uh, and try to get this money? Well, I think your best opportunity would be a small local bank that doesn't have high security, and uh, <laughs> you know, or uh, um, if you're really just looking for twenty or forty bucks, you can go to the local Seven Eleven and uh, uh, try to intimidate them to it, you try and persuade them to give you money. I suggest not bringing a gun because that will add ten to twenty years to the sentence. Yeah, well, the good advice, Robert. And and what I love about you is that you don't just give tax advice, you give personal advice, too. 
So good stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, course, when we're, you, not, we're not endorsing. We're not endorsing that you do that, but um, I'm just, you know, you're asking you what are the what opportunities on the same. It is a real opportunity, but, right? So I love it. Well, I he's like someone that's a criminal on the run. A criminal will probably have thought of these things already. That's know? true. Uh, that's so they, in the uh, yeah. current administration in Washington D.C. Whatever. Okay. Now, is there a chance that the government is ever going to ask me for this money back? This is not, uh, first of all, the most important thing is it's not income. Second of all, it's, it's a grant. It's, you do not have to pay it back. The $1,200 you know, per, per adult and the $500 per kid, you will not have to get it paid back. You never will have to be asked to pay it back. Very good. Now, now the problem is coming up is that some employers are saying, Hey, you're getting fifteen hundred, twelve hundred dollars from the government. We're going to cut your pay by twelve hundred dollars. But that's capitalism, you know. That that's the way that works. And that's are, a, are they going to say that that's illegal, or, or can they stop that? Uh, it's highly unlikely that um, the pro business administration would say that it's illegal. Well, no, I mean, if you have a deal, that's that they're saying. They're saying, "Hey, you got money from the government. We're not going to. We're going to duck your pay for that." Yeah, how can they actually do that though? Because if if they're working hourly, you got to pay them what your contract says. If you're on a salary, you got to pay them the salary. So, um, I think you. I think we're repeating fake news, my friend. So you were. Uh, well, well, fake news is what most some people that call fake news are, is the truth that people don't want to believe is happening. So they call it fake news. It'd be like saying that uh, Jim Meyer's handsome. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, that's fake news. But who's gonna whatever? Okay, but, so let me ask. I'm not you even gonna go into that double work. negative. <laughs> I'm a follower of Jim, and I believe that uh, he is a handsome guy. And uh, he is absolutely. You said it was fake news, but that's just an opinion. You know, we're talking about facts here. Okay, so uh, the fact is that I heard that you were the CPA for Burning Man for many years. Is that fake news or is that real? Fake news. I don't, you know, I, I kind of hesitate to talk to anyone who uses the term fake news. Okay, is that propaganda? Is it, it, it propaganda. shows a loose, a loose control of reality. However, yes, I was the CPA of Burning Man for 14 years, and it was a wonderful experience. I met, Great. met wonderful creative people and uh, helped the organization in its growth from a small company to uh well, that's when I talk numbers, but when I first started working with them, now their revenues are 10 times what they were back then. And it's wonderful to see this, you know, like any client. I, I, my goal is to help my clients to achieve the best um, possible income that they can and to help advise them as to how to position themselves. And this was a pretty exciting experience to see it grow. Yeah, and, and you've been uh, really good to the Meyer family, uh, making us uh, successful over the years. So we appreciate you. And uh, now, Jim, I was there when is that, is, is that I was there when Jim and Jean. Uh, I'm sorry, and they produced two wonderful kids. You know, so um, they've had a good life. I don't know about that, but well, uh, great. Well, Jim, is that where you got the advice of something about make sure the bills are unmarked? Is that is this the same? Uh, now, the, here's what we got to understand is that <laughs> Robert and I are in charge of the jokes, and Jim, you're the technical guy. We understand that, of course. Yeah. Of course, the Asian guy is a technical guy, but we're also the math guy, too. We love numbers. That's true. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure so, you have good jokes about numbers there, you know? That, uh, see, I'm not good with the numbers, and that's why I've got Robert Brownstein on my side. And uh, you're very good at negotiating deals with the government. Uh, if somebody owes, I'm not going to talk about anybody in particular, but tens of thousands, close to 100,000 in taxes, uh, you can knock that down to pennies on the dollar. And I've heard. Well, you know, that's not for every. You got to fit the circumstances. And 
if, if the circumstances are right, it's your duty to, to use those laws to um, get a fresh start and, and do away with that that may uh, put you under instead of helping you to continue and thrive as a business or an individual working, earning, earning living. It's very important that um, you, you, uh, you know, I have people, I've had people come to me and say, well, you know, well, let's just make up these numbers. And I said, well, good luck with your next CPA because I don't, but my job is to make sure that I apply all the rules that I've learned about and that people take advantage of all the, um, the tax laws that will help them to reduce their taxes. It's, it's really important. That's what it's there for. You know, you, you, uh, people should be able to keep their money. You work hard for your money and you should be able to keep it and invest it and, uh, and watch it grow. One of the things that's very interesting that's become clear in the last couple of years, if you don't necessarily agree with whichever, you know, whether your party or the other party is in control of the government, uh, you can still give your money to organizations and deduct it, you know, to funnel your, reduce your taxes and also funnel your money into causes that you think are relevant, whether it's, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, protect, or, protecting American eagles or being able to drill oil on your neighbor's land without them knowing it, you know? So, yeah, that's, uh, I would love to do that. Um, well, you know, you, that's what the, you know, whatever that there, there's organizations for everything. What I'm all I'm saying without getting one side or the other. Oh, no, never. If the government isn't doing what you think they should be doing, give your money to the groups that are doing it. And that makes a lot of sense. Now, let me ask you this, you know, we have, um, you know, people think, hey, I'll just give money to a nonprofit, you know, to save money, of course, and you do good as well, right? We have the 501c3s, which are just um, general populist help humanity sort of nonprofits. You have C4s that are uh, cause-based a little bit, C6s that are membership-driven. Um, right. In terms of the write-offs, if you contribute to, like, for instance, a chamber, which is a 501c3, uh, C six, I believe, is that correct? They're they're a um, they're a nonprofit for membership purposes. Can you get a full write off on all of the nonprofits, or how are they different? Well, it all depends. You know, first of all, if they're if they're doing something for the public good, you can deduct it. You can't deduct. Um, not that they're five hundred one c's, but the, the political organizations. You can't deduct donations to PACs, it's more or less a focused cause, like the local hospital or uh, the local homeless shelter or uh, uh, I'm just trying to think of other, you know, but your, your church, your synagogue, your mosque, or your uh, temple. Um, so you say that a super PAC is not deductible? That's correct. Look, you're buying a politician, and it's not a deduction. You know, Darn it. you can't deduct buying a politician when you're buying the politician to vote in your favor for. Got it. You know, but it's still legal to buy a politician. Now, here's the. Oh point. yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay, you heard it here on the power of Jim. Well, thank you. you know, they 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 recently said, you know, through. Uh, Citizens United, that corporations are individuals. However, I can't understand if corporations are individuals, why the government is breaking the law by giving them more than $1,200 a piece. If corporations are an individual, individuals are getting $1,200. Well, why did you write your comment? Uh, I don't quite follow that, you know? So the law isn't always clear. And the law is something that uh, if you've got enough money and power, you can uh, skirt around it. Am yeah. I right? No, you don't skirt around it. You buy enough Congress people or senators, you know, like, <laughs> well, whatever, you know. You, you, Knowing you, that you can't write it off. So. <laughs> so, well, it depends on how you do it, right? So if you have a good account, well, take care of her CPA. Hopefully the benefit of your 
purchased congressperson will be more than you would get through writing it off. Yes, absolutely, especially if you want to drill for oil on your next door neighbor's uh, yard. Well, it's cost benefit analysis. Yes. You go this way and invest this much money. How about my return if I go this way, which will produce the more money for your investment? That's more bang for your buck. So well, that's clear political analysis. Uh, clear, excuse me, not political, economic analysis. But seriously, the government has taken the step to make sure that people get this minimal amount, twelve hundred dollars a person, and uh, which should which should last a couple of afternoons at the track or the casino. But uh, they're helping. They are helping, and a lot of people have gotten their business loans. A lot of businesses. I've been able to do these uh, payroll part, uh, payroll loans. I mean, the the, the uh, program isn't perfect, but it certainly is a, a great help to companies that that uh, have been hit by the stop closing, literal closing of their business. You know? So you're in in Marin County. Is uh, there's a lot of wealth in Marin County? Are are people suffering there as much as they are in other areas or have most of them socked away a little bit of money uh, to be able to pay their $5,000 a month uh, mortgage? Well, uh, for the poorer people that are paying only $5,000 a month mortgage, they may be hurting a little bit, you know. The right, people. but the average that they're paying eight to 10 or 12,000 a month mortgage, um, they're doing okay, right? Well, you have to understand, Marin is uh, one of the third or fourth highest per capita income counties in the United States. So the economics of the 330,000 people living in Marin are not necessarily the same thing as 11 million living in Los Angeles. But, uh, I mean, I haven't seen any people um, sleeping on the streets, but that's because the sheriff or the any, there are 11 police uh, administrations in Marin County, and uh, they all make sure that people stay behind bushes and are not out and visible. So um, whether they're suffering or not is, uh, I don't see a lot of moving trucks around here. So these people aren't living paycheck to paycheck. Got it. And now, uh, as we get to the end of our show here, what do you have for one big piece of advice that you can give to anybody who, like say your average person comes in here, shows you your, their, what they did for the year, and they say, Robert, can you do my taxes? The first time they meet, they say, oh my God, why didn't you do da, da, da. Is there something, some big piece of advice you can share? I think what's more relevant, uh, yeah, I, well, yeah, the, uh, any company, one of the things I ask for is, what are your cash reserves? Mm-hmm. And the rule of thumb is that any company, and, and a house, a personal a household, whether it's both you know, people or there's a couple at work, whether they're a household or a business, they should have three to six months of cash, ready cash. Now, I don't mean sitting in a box in a drawer, but money that can be readily available if there is a um, pandemic, or if the if the business depends on one person and their activity, then uh, you want to have three to six months of income set aside. Now, people start to say that's ridiculous or that's high, and I'm not talking in a four hundred one k. Taking money out of a 401k or an IRA is the worst situation because you're only getting 50 cents on a dollar. But save some money. Set aside. Start, have, have a, I mean, this, this is an emergency right now. And, and it's really important that everyone, business or personal, have a three to six month emergency fund. And I'm not talking living extravagantly, but it's saying, what amount of money, the first step is a dual budget for your business or your personal what amount of money do I need not to not to live outrageously and not to be starving, but to be comfortable per month? Figure that number out and then get three to six times of that amount into a bank. 
yeah. and stock up on toilet paper. <laughs> you know, it still comes it still comes down to know your numbers, you know. Numbers don't Absolutely. lie. Absolutely. You are correct. Yep, and numbers don't lie, just like uh, Shakira said, hips don't either. But um, it is really important to understand your numbers. And, um, you know, again, being in the financial arena myself, you know, I do a lot in retirement space and also uh, insurance, your protection, growth. But also just with what you're doing, I think it's really remarkable that you've been able to have so many uh, great years of experience serving a lot of uh, people here. And I just want to make this comment. I'm just listening and having a great time. And you know what? Here's what I love. Numbers can be fun. And the whole thing is, is I see your relationship with uh, Jim and just your guys' dynamic and, you know, whatever it is, make it a party, make it fun, you know? And so thank you so much for your advice. So definitely, I really heard what you said. Jim, I'm I'd, like to, I'd like to put one more thing out there. Sure. If, if you are interested in reading about taxes, yes, trying to learn for yourself, the IRS and the Franchise Tax Board put out weekly newsletters. Now, when you get that newsletter, not all of it, some of it may not even apply, but every now and then they're going to come up with something you can say, wow, that's right. That applies directly to me. But thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to... Uh, share some of the things that I've learned over the years. Awesome. Well, any final words from you, uh, Mr. Meyer? Uh, no, I just say that uh, uh, Robert, usually what we like to do is promote our, our interviewees for business, but Robert, you're getting ready to retire at age uh, 43. And uh, we appreciate 45. You don't need any new clients, right? Well, actually, I'm, I'm not looking to grow my client base, but I am working on a book called Mind Your Own Business, which is okay. over the years, many people have come into my office and said, I want to start a new business. What do I need to know? So I'm writing a book to answer those questions, and I expect it to be out in another year. Well, That's are great. you going to come on our show and promote it? Absolutely. Oh, Wow. Well, this is this is good though. Um, one question that, that, that I want to ask you: flat tax or taxes the way they are? Do you believe in flat tax? No, flat tax is not. Uh, I don't. I think I think we're we're in a better position than a flat tax. Flat tax. Um, the problem is we get into cycle. There's one party that comes in and says, "Oh." Nobody should pay taxes. We should slash the taxes. And then, as we've seen recently, the trip, the deficit can go from a surplus to trillions. And then that, that party comes out of uh, power, and the next party comes in and has to raise taxes to pay for it, – it's like a credit card, all the credit cards that the previous administration has used. And then those people say, oh, look at those people. They want to they wanna raise our taxes. They're the tax and spend. They don't say, we're the spenders. They're the people that need to pay it back. You know, so. Mm. Okay, so the correct answer is yes, flat tax would be better. Robert well, Brostai, you're taxes awesome. Are good, you know? Well, this is really good. Well, we want to thank you so much, Robert, for uh, joining us here today. And again, uh, CPA, uh, look out for his book, Mind Your Own Business. Own business. Yes. Mind your own business, all right? Copyrighted. Uh, Somebody's going to steal it. <laughs> That's you right. Can't the title. I know you can't, but you can still trademark yeah. the logo, copyright the actual uh, whatever you've written so far. Well, I'm going to have a subtitle. It's called Mind Your Own Business, Follow the Jim Meyer uh, Path to Success. Okay. That's so. right. And that's it. And, you know, Thank you so much. It shows that we can just have fun and really understand numbers. Numbers can be fun here, but really great advice was given here. Thank you so much. Robert. Jim, 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 is this on every week? This is on once a week. We actually uh, are. Yep. We, because I'd like to follow you in, in the future. Great. Well, uh, well, we would love to have you join us on the media and news channel on YouTube as well. And right. right now it's free before people, people have been asking Jim to pay a hundred dollars to just join our subscription. <laughs> no, not, that's not really true. No, we are, uh, we are excited. I, I insist on paying you two fifty. you know? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, um, and then he could write it off, right? I'll, uh, I'll that's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to do a, uh, what is it? Like a little trailer for this? We Robert, will. And I'll tag you. 
and then you can become Jim's friend on Facebook too, and yeah. you see all the stuff. And and then Jim is going to start tagging you on everything, and then you're going to regret <laughs> the fact you were born. Well, well, this, this is, that's that's been not too long ago, but we want to conclude this uh, episode, and and we're just having a lot of fun here as well. But all sincerity, um. Be safe with everything that's going on. And remember, you heard Robert first on The, the Power of Jim. Woo! <laughs> Robert, too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.